שלום, אנחנו נסוע רק בעצם עם קל הלאה ימלה, יאו, בא שם, יאו שי, בא שם, רכה קדש. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great mills, so for teaching us the truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word and sincerity and the truth. Shalom, but hopefully look. I'm the brother Kotas of Zion from GMS Holland branch. Come back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai with another lesson, with another video. And Lord willing, this video is edifying. Okay, so in this lesson, I want to go into the fact that in Isaiah 19, the Canaanites and Egyptians and Assyrians that are spoken about in this scripture, in this uh, chapter, is not speaking about the actual Canaanites, but it's speaking about the Israelites spiritually. You see? Because the Most High, He doesn't contradict Himself. He is going to save only the Israelites and no Canaanites or Assyrians. You see? So, with that, or the Bible doesn't contradict itself. And the Most High, He doesn't go against His own world. Bird. So, let me rephrase that. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's go to Isaiah. 19 let me start at 18 and read on down this is isaiah 19 verse 18 in that day shall five cities in the land of egypt speak the language of canaan and swear to the most high power of hosts one shall be called the city of destruction and so it says, in that day shall five cities of the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan. And that's Egypt that is being spoken about here is called spiritually Sodom and Egypt. This is the spiritual Egypt, you know, which is America. Let's go to that Revelation 11, verse 8. And the dead body shall lie in this great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So the dead bodies, which is the dead bodies of the of the Israelites, which represent their dead estate that we were in, you know, that we didn't know who we were, that the breath of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai did not enter into us, the truth of the scriptures, the truth of the Bible. We didn't know who we were. We didn't know that we are the people of the Most High. You see? So that's the, the dead bodies, which that represents, and the spiritually... And the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, is speaking about America, you know, because that's where our people dwelt, and that's where this truth was waking up, was was uh, first preached, you know. So as it says in the scripture, in the land of their captivity, they should remember themselves, you see, which is the land of America. That's where this, the the truth started to to spring up, you see. So that's. Sodom and Egypt, that's the spiritual Egypt, America. So going back, Isaiah 19 and 18, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan, which, which language did we speak in the land of Canaan? Which is, that's Hebrew, you see? So in that time, Five cities in the land of Canaan speak the language of Salaka. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan, which the language of Canaan is Hebrew, which the Most High would bring back to us. This is Sephaniah 3, verse 9, and it reads, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon my name, Salakia so will call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. You see? So the Most High returned that pure language, that, that language of Canaan unto us, so that we can call upon his name, you know, with one consent. You see? So the name is very important. You can't, uh, there's no um, 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 other name on the heaven in which we might be safe, which is Yahweh Shai and Yahweh. You know, you have to have the names. You see? You can't be calling upon Yahweh, which Yahweh is a Edomite God, you know, and or or Ahaya or 
say lord lord bless or something like that no with one consent the most high he promised he would return one name one language onto the people so that they can call on his name and one consent so that's what happened Isaiah 19 verse 19 in that day shall there be an altar to the most high in the midst of the land of Egypt in the midst of America and a pillar at the border thereof and it shall be a sign and for a witness unto the most high power of hosts in the land of Egypt which these these altars the altar or these camps so you have multiple camps in the land of Egypt you have multiple camps in America you see so that's that's that altar that's that sacrifice that's the place that we come to give our bodies as a living sacrifice you see and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the most high power of hosts in the land of egypt for they shall cry unto the lord because of the oppressors and shall send and he shall send them a savior and a great one and he shall deliver them Come on. So the Most High, He's hearing our cries. He's hearing the, the, the sacrifices that we make upon the altars. He's hearing that we are being uh, oppressed. You know, He's hearing our cries. You see? And He's going to send uh, a Savior, which that Savior is Yahweh Shai. Let's go to X 5 and... Thirty-one. Thirty and thirty-one. This X five, verse thirty and thirty-one. So like X five and thirty. The most high power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him had Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You see? So that's that savior Yahweh Shai is the savior that's gonna give repentance unto his people the Israelites so reading on verse 21 and the Lord shall be known to Egypt and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in the day so like in that day and shall do sacrifice and oblations yea they shall vow a vow unto the most high and perform it come on so these Egyptians that are going to do these oblations and sacrifices, they have to be Israelites. They are Israelites because the Most High didn't give, give these other nations the law, statutes, and commandments. So they can do whatever they want. But the sacrifices and oblations, those were signs and tokens for the Most High that his people, you know, they, they, they repent from the sin that they committed. You see? So, let's go to a precept, which is in the land of Salakia, which is in the book of Ezekiel start at 1 this is Ezekiel 16 verse 1 against the again the word of the Most High came unto me saying son of man cause Jerusalem to know her abominations and say thus said Yahweh Basham Yahweh unto Jerusalem thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan thy father was an Amorite and thy mother a Hittite you see, so this resembles that we were going after the ways of these heathen, you know. Thy father a uh, Amorite and thy mother a Hittite. That doesn't mean that we are uh, Hamites. No, we were going after their gods. We were going after their ways, you see. So the Most High made it known to us that we were doing abominations. So going back to Isaiah 19. When it says, 
that the Egyptians, Isaiah 19, verse 21, and the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do a sacrifice and oblation, yea, they shall vow or vow unto the Most High and perform it. So those, those Egyptians, those are Israelites that were in the ways of uh, the land. Isaiah 19, verse 21. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, which is America, and the Egyptians shall know the Most High in that day, which are the Israelites that are coming back to their heritage, you know, the ones that were once in this uh, snare of the devil, the so-called white man, you know, they didn't know who they were, and shall do sacrifice and oblation, yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Most High and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite and heal it, and they shall return even to the Most High, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. God, so the Most High is healing us, you know, from our, our iniquities and our sins and our wicked ways. You see? Because if the Most High was doing this to, to another nation, then the Most High uh, uh, would be going against his own word. And what does his word say? Let's go to Zechariah 14. Let me start at 16. Read until 21. Zechariah 14 and 16. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king the Most High, power of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord, power of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, and have no rain, there shall be a plague wherewith the Most High will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So the Most High is requiring of all nations that they come to worship the King. You see? That's when the Kingdom of Heaven is going to be established here upon Earth. So He's not going to give them rain. So that's, that's forcing them, actually. So if they would be saved, just like how the Israelites would be saved, then they shouldn't need to be forced because the mind uh, their mind is going to be according to the most high they're going to have the laws in their inner parts but these nations they're going to have to be forced to worship you see so an example this is the family of egypt you see verse 19 this shall be the punishment of egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles in that day shall there be upon the bells of the Horses, holiness unto the Most High, and pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls, the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Most High, power of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seed therein. And in that day shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Most High, power of hosts. You see? So if the Most High was dealing with the Canaanites and Egyptians, just like how he's dealing with the Israelites, then they would not be forced to, to worship the Most High. They would do it automatically. You see? So that shows you that this is not a contradiction. This is the, the Egyptians, those or the Israelites that are coming back to their heritage. Because the Most High, he would use that analogy because they, he, he, he stopped dealing with them. You know, just like it says in uh, Hosea 1, verse 9, it says, Then said the Most High, Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your power. You see, so they were going after other gods, so the Most High is like, Okay, you want to do that? You, you, you can do what you want, you know. Those are the, the, the Israelites that, you know, went in the, into the way of the Egyptians. Verse 10, 
Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered, so like I cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. So that's the time that we're living in. Everybody that that uh, didn't know that they were Israelites, now everybody and their mama know that they're about the Israelites and that the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are Israelites. They should have uh, heard that by now, you know, because the prophets are back on the street. You see? So going back. To Isaiah 19. Verse 22. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal it. And they shall return even to the Most High. And he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptian shall serve with the Assyrian. So, let's go to Isaiah 11 and 11 real quick to show you that our people are scattered all over the earth. This um, Isaiah 11 and 11 and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria you see that's what it starts off with and the people that dwell in Assyria how, how are they called Assyrians you see so we have our people in Assyria from Egypt from Petros so our people are also in, in Egypt in all these countries that are being named and from Petros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamat, and from the Isles of the Sea. So, jumping to verse 16, and it says, There shall be an highway for the remnant of his people. You see, which that highway represents deliverance. So, the remnant of his people are all these, is this, is, uh, uh, how you call it? Let me just look it up. The remainder. Gone. So is a remainder of his people, the, the the Israelites that are going to return to their heritage, those are going to be delivered. So Isaiah 16 and 11, it's like Isaiah 11 and 16. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. You see, that's that deliverance. So... Let's go back to Isaiah 19. Verse 23. So now you know what that highway means. Isaiah 19, verse 23. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians, so that resembles the Israelites that came back to their heritage, you know, that turned away from the, the, the ways of the Egyptians and Assyrians, which are the oppressors. You see? Verse 24, In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. So if you go into that word, a third, it's sha, shalaya, shalayashia, which is a third, which is the remnant, you know, which is that innumerable multitude. Let's go to Zechariah 13 and 8 to show you that. It's the same word, a third, which is the one third that's going to be the innumerable multitude in the end of the days that is also going to be saved. This uh, Zechariah 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, which all the land represents America, the land of America, said the Most High, two parts thereof shall be cut off and die, but a third shall be left therein. And the third is exactly that word that we just read. In Isaiah 19, Shalai Yashia, you see, which that 
is the innumerable multitude, which is mentioned in Revelation 7, verse 9. You know, to make it full circle, to show you that our people are scattered all over the, the, the earth and the Most High is going to gather them from all the four corners of the earth. You see? So that's why our people are called by different names also. But now they are turning back to their real biblical uh, nationality and knowledge of who they are. You see? This is uh, Revelation 7 verse 9. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindred, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. Done. So, the one-third, which is the innumerable multitude, is also going to be um, saved. You see? They are going to be taken from all these places that they have been scattered. Go to Isaiah 14, verse 1. This is Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Which the strangers are the, the Israelites that are scattered all over the four corners of the earth. Also, the ones that look like these other nations. You see? Okay, so, in Isaiah 19, the Egyptians and Assyrians and Canaanites is speaking about Israelites that came back to the knowledge of who they are. So, let's finish it off with uh, the last two verses. Isaiah 19, verse 24. In that day shall Israel <coughs> be the third. <coughs> Salakia. Isaiah 19, verse 24. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Most High Power of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. You see? So that's the stranger that is cleaving onto the house of Israel. Those are the Israelite foreigners. Those are the ones that are scattered in the four corners of the earth. Done. So with that, I hope this video is edifying. And I want to say, Kal halal yamla, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahushai, Ba'asham, Rekha, Kodash, Shalom, Akim.